and welcome back lovely people. There seems to be a lot of interest about volcanoes right now and thank you for watching my film about Yellowstone. The concept of supervolcanoes is very important. But supervolcanoes aren't just devastating for the environment. They might just be devastating to the whole human race. About a year ago I made a film called human bottleneck. Now this is a passionate subject of mine. I worked on a science film a few years ago about actually about Yellowstone and as part of the research we met Stanley Ambrose from Illinois University who is interested in human history. Stanley asked some really amazing questions about why we are so not diverse. Over the hundreds of thousands of years that humans, ancient humans, modern humans, have lived on this planet, you would think that there would be more diversity. Very large people, very short people, uh, people with different abilities, maybe different head shapes and body shapes, but there aren't. And he has a theory. Now, this theory is now totally accepted. This is not aliens from the planet Zog. This is not pseudoscience. This is real stuff. What I'm going to do today is replay my film on the human bottleneck because very few people watched it, which is a shame. And it's really important. Now, occasionally as a filmmaker and not really as a scientist, I mess up. So anything that you see in it that you'd like to ask questions about or you think I got something slightly wrong, please write the comment below because that's the point of this channel. Two things. One, two things. <laughs> One, the broadcasters weren't really interested in what formed the human race. And two, we can interact here on YouTube. And that's what I've always wanted to do with this channel and with you people is to give you theories that you don't normally see on TV or read in the newspapers and let you discuss below what your thoughts are. And it's working really well, so thank you for all your loyal uh, viewers. Let's try and build the viewership up a bit more. <laughs> I actually need to actually have more viewers to make this channel more self-sustaining or consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, the Patreon money goes towards films or feeding Wallace the goat. <laughs> Both are good. Anyway, sit back, don't relax, <laughs> and watch this film I made a year ago called The Human Bottleneck. And it starts off talking about volcanoes, but then it talks about you. On the 15th of April, 1815, Mount Tambora erupted in Indonesia. The effects of this eruption were felt all over the world. In Europe, people experienced a year without summer. Rivers froze, crops failed, and the planet was plunged into a time of unexpected cooling. Mount Tambora was a pretty normal volcano. The cooling effect was caused by ash ejected into the upper atmosphere. This reflected sunlight and caused a sudden and surprising cooling effect. But this film is not really about volcanoes. It's about us, the human race. Humans have been on this planet for six million years. We first evolved into our upright walking shape we have today in the east of Africa. Slowly humans evolved characteristics that helped us survive. Bigger brains. Stronger hands that can manipulate tools and the ability to be creative. Over these millions of years, evolution must have made many successful variations of the human form. But today we are all incredibly similar in shape, height and abilities. Small differences exist due to adaptation to the environment. But we are not the diverse human race that you would expect to see. The question is, why? Volcanoes might just hold a clue to this mystery. 
But the answer does not lie in the rocks, but deep inside all of us. Part of our DNA has a clock inside it. If we look inside ourselves, we all appear to be only 178,000 years old. Where are the giants and the dwarfs? The humans with strange shaped heads and sophisticated abilities. It seems as if we are all the children of the same mother. A modern human woman who gave birth to the entire human population. I was introduced to Stanley Ambrose while working on a BBC film about Yellowstone National Park and its volcanic potential. Stanley put forward the theory of population bottlenecks. Times when life on Earth is drastically reduced by unknown catastrophes, reducing animals and humans to only a handful of lucky survivors that become the mothers and fathers of everyone. The question he asked was, what could have happened 178,000 years ago to reduce the human population so drastically? Ambrose stumbled upon a paper about the largest volcanic eruption ever to hit planet Earth. Toba. Just like Mount Pinatuba, Toba is in Indonesia on the island of Sumatra. Today a placid 30 mile lake, but 178,000 years ago, a supervolcano. A supervolcano is unlike any other type of eruption. Instead of a classic volcanic cone-shaped mountain, these monsters erupt when the ground sinks into a massive pit of molten lava. Hundreds of times more powerful than conventional eruptions, and spewing out so much gas and ash that they not only cause a year without summer, but maybe a hundred years of volcanic darkness. Their effect would kill all vegetation and animals on the planet, with only a lucky few finding sanctuary from the devastation. This bottleneck reduced our diversity and wiped out human abilities we have long forgotten. Ambrose thinks modern humans survived partially because they helped each other. He calls this a tribal response. The humans that died organized themselves into troops. A troop is a close-knit group that does not cooperate with neighboring groups and so fail to share resources and knowledge. Hidden in the fossil record are fascinating glimpses of a diverse human race, unlike anything alive today. We are finding evidence of giants and dwarfs from a period before modern life began. When will this happen again? And who might survive? The truth is out there.